Greetings in the name of Naomi and Asaya, all that is great and good, all that is blessed and beautiful, all that is creative and conscious. Greetings, everyone. May you find yourself in a joyous space, and may your successes be infinite like the night stars, and your opportunities be never-ending. Yes, that was the music by uh, Erwin Berlin from the, the film Show uh, uh, and Get Your Gun. There's no business like show business. Note the word business. There is no business like show business. Bringing us into another episode of Artist to Artist, Let's Talk Rediscovering Our Creative Voice, a series that engages artists in a conversation about topics germane to us. Welcome to another addition to Artist to Artist, Let's Talk Rediscovering Our Creative Voice. I am, of course, Adisa Olobayo Bancole, a professional actor, storyteller, poet, and drummer, and now venturing into script writing and being a lyricist. So come and join me as we journey down this path to stardom. Now, you may leave your comments at www, the potential artist in you. Or shoot me an email at or, uh, shoot me an email at adisa at the potential artist in you dot com. Or you know you know do something you know shoot me something on my face my wall on Facebook. However, again, if you desire to engage in negativity, mean spiritedness pessimism, or any of those adjectives, then don't bother posting at all. Leave those thoughts in the recesses of the closets of your mind. This is a space for those who wish to engage, explore, communicate positively and constructively. Now, as I have done in the past three episodes, I always give a shout out to a family member and colleagues who have and are making a difference in my life and who have given me encouragement, inspired me, and simply have been there with me on this creative sojourn. Now, like I have said, this is important because, you know, we often get caught up in our own journey that we don't acknowledge those who have been on this path with us. So this is my way of saying thank you. My first gratitude is to my great grandmother Alice Fleming who kept me in check with her her story. She inspired me to be a storyteller and gave me the foundation for knowing history. Much much acknowledgement to the elders in particular Mr. Slim, who was a storyteller, consummate storyteller, My brother came up from Arkansas, and I used to listen to his stories all the time. He gave to me a world of wisdom and stories that to this day are etched in my mind. Let me acknowledge this fellow creative colleague who has been such a support not only in my acting career, but in my writing as well. We have traveled down both the creative and cultural road together, and he continues to be an inspiration, support, and a blessed friend whom I am proud to have and I am proud to call my brother. I am talking about none other than my good brother, Danjuma Sinue Madupe. Mad love and respect to him. And I am looking forward, forward to seeing his book come to fruition. Now, 
Let us, as I always have done in my last episode, deal with the, the topics from articles from my website, the www, the potential artist and you. These are articles that I have written, and so I'm sharing them with you. In this particular episode, we will deal with what I call the Tootsie Syndrome. That's taken from the film Tootsie. Now, sometimes, you know, when you, you, you think that you're doing something good, and, and, and you, you, you want to give some advice and you're, you're trying to help somebody. And sometimes it doesn't always work out the way that you want to. Some years ago, a colleague of mine who was a very talented and gifted actress berated me for what I thought was a friendly and professional advice on their acting headshots, which is the calling card for actors. I have since uh, apologized to this uh, gifted artist. However, that was a bridge that was burned. You see, artists often, no matter what creative expression they are, but particularly in the performing artists, fail to realize that it is a business. A business. That's why when we opened the show, it was called show business. There's nothing like show business. It is business. Many times an artist doesn't realize that they are struggling between their creative and business side of their profession. This business and inner, this becomes an inner battle between within the artist trying to move through the harsh reality. This can often lead to an unconscious reaction that causes many artists to, one, become creatively limited and artistically doubtful with their abilities, and two, often rail against the business side of the profession, becoming unsettled with the profession in and of itself. To this extent, I always think of the conversation between Michael, the actor, and George, his agent in the film, Tootsie, hence the Tootsie Syndrome. You see, George is trying to explain to Michael the business side of, of the profession, whereas Michael is trying to demonstrate his credentials as an artist or as an actor. You see, like Michael, we admire our creative flair, our unique expressions, our sometimes quirky behavior, and the muse of our creativity, which we often reap, wrap ourselves in. But the cold, cold reality, however, is that our creativity doesn't sustain us. When the mortgage is due, before we can get to that place and space where we have the power to express our creative originality, we must wear the three-piece suit so that we are making money for, for our muse rather than being amused by watching others express their creativity and being awarded for it. Now, like all things in life, and this is, I believe, what this young, wonderful, creative, talented actress was dealing with. Like all things in life, there are, has been, and always will be exceptions to the rules where one's uniqueness and or creative flair becomes an asset to them. Now, of course, you have heard in, in some of the uh, biographies and, and talk shows, again, you know, like Jamie Foxx or some other uh, person, that they're, you know, they, they went out on the limb. They, 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 they took a leap of faith. And, and they just used their, their panache, if we want to say, to, to, to get them going, to get them started. 
And it was because of that uniqueness, that creativity, that, that flair, that mm, that somebody saw them. They were, uh, 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 they, they were able to do it. And you see, for example, one's headshot may be done in a fashion that is un, unconventional, although creative with personality. It may not be industry standard. But you see, that is not always the case. Nine times out of ten, it is not the case. In the beginning, one needs to approach the profession in a practical, business-like manner. We must always remain creative, although we must always remain creative and unique in our expressions, but remain conscious that this is a business. What I believe is that we need to have a balanced approach and never lose our creative spirit while at the same time embrace the ABCs of the business aspect. Only in this way can we really begin to be fruitful both creatively and financially. So, be ever creative, imaginative, artistic, and unique. Accepting that you are a professional creative expressionist, guided by the passion of your muse. Growing, developing, aspiring to reach the top of your profession. Yet, yet, understand that we all have to pay our dues in this mundane but also real world. Let's not begrudge this reality. Let's embrace it. Everyday life is, after all, what we give voice and vision to, and at times, desire to change aspects of everyday life. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Again, this is Adisa Olubayo Bankole with Artist to Artist. Let's talk rediscovering our creative voice. And now, next time, we will be dealing with the topic, Don't Cheapen the Art. But until next time, this is what I want you to do. I want you to keep believing. I want you to keep dreaming. I want you to keep imagining. But most of all, I want you to keep achieving. Madasi.